He is presently working Excuse on the. I'm sorry. Do you have a louder and clearer numbers? No. Oh. Looking for you. I thought you were telling me I was two. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say one. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. John Fry is presently working on the persuasive speaking manual. Most of the assignments in that manual revolve around straight up selling, an activity loathed by most people. However, nothing happens until something is sold, and it is a rare sales position that does not involve some cold calling. Today's speech is an unrehearsed cold call to Vail Corporation regarding making Toastmasters part of their training system. John's objectives are to recognize the risks buyers assume in purchasing, use questions to help the buyer discover problems with their current situation, handle the buyer's objectives and concerns. The speech time has two parts, a three to four minute explanation of cold calling, followed by a five to seven minute role play. Please welcome John Carter. Hi, how are you today? Oh, good Lord. Oh, not one of those calls. We've, we've, we've all got them. They're, they're horrible to either receive or, or create. Today we'll talk about cold call. As mentioned in the introduction, nothing happens until something gets sold. Nobody get, ultimately gets paid. Parts don't get ordered. Machines don't get ordered. Advertising doesn't happen. Sue Ann doesn't get paid for her social media service. Nothing happens until somebody sells something. Now, cold calling, I think, frankly, cold calling ought to be your last, your, your last resort. Using something like social media, blogs, traditional advertising, any other media that you can think of to generate leads is frankly far superior to cold calling. However, ultimately, I just don't know any function, particularly a high-end function, that doesn't involve cold calling at some level. So three, before we get to the demonstration with Sherry, three ideas for you. First, try to do some research on whoever you're cold calling, both the company and the individual. The research is probably best done by going to their website. You can infer what a company thinks is important by looking at their website, how, how they phrase things, how they organize things, the emphasis, what they say their products are. Secondly, if you can use something like LinkedIn, probably the professional version to figure out who you want to try to approach initially, go to their, go to their profile, look, look at their job description and whatnot. That's very, very helpful. So first, first point is do research. Second point, whatever you do, don't start your call by saying, how's your day going? How are you? Pe people from the South have a saying that that is too familiar. They, you, you don't know them. They don't know you. Asking somebody how your day is going it just, just is off-putting right away. So don't, don't, don't ask them how their day is going. Don't try to be there. Third, the third point is cold calling is a remarkably fluid activity. You've got to figure out if the person that you're calling is, is the person you want to talk to. And that hardly ever happens. And so you've got to both simultaneously roll with an explanation and try to figure out whoever you're, what the, the, the person you're talking with, how can they have help you get to your ultimate objective, which is the person that you want to speak with that has authority over whatever issue that you're calling about. So with that, let's, let's rotate into our role play. Sherry knows nothing about this uh, 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 project at all, other than I'm calling on behalf of Toastmasters to try to integrate our service into Vail's training program. And I've specifically instructed Sherry to kind of be, you know, to, you know, not take it easy on me. Be, be real. She's she's worked in professional uh, service companies for a long, long time, so she knows exactly how these things go. So, with that, let's let's start out. And ring, ring. Very resorts. This is Sherry. 
Hi, uh, Sherry, this is John Fry. I'm with the Toastmasters Club of Park City. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. And I would like to talk with someone that is in charge of the Vail training program, Super GS Customer Service. Vail training program, Super GS. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, that's a program name I haven't heard. Oh, gosh, I, well, I, uh, my apologies. That's the training program I looked on your website before I called. That's the internal training program for Vail employees. Ah. And so perhaps someone in human resources might know about that? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, with the communications department. Um, yeah, probably someone in human resources would probably be a better bet. So let, let, let's stop right there. So that is a wonderful example. I, I did research, picked up the phone, called the wrong person. So now all, <clears throat> excuse me, all I can get out of sugar is who is the right person and could she transfer me and could she do an introduction on the phone? Pretty unlikely, actually. She didn't know me from Adam. She's not going to spend her internal social chips on introducing me to her friend in HR. So let's, let's pick up the conversation at that point. Gosh, uh, do you think you could transfer me to the appropriate person in human resources? And do you know who that is? You know, I'd be more than happy to transfer you back to the front receptionist. That, very good. Thank you very much. No, this, this is real. This is exactly how it goes. This, this, this is how it goes. So let, let's stop, stop here. I'll go back to the receptionist. And let's pick up with the receptionist and then see if I can get to HR. <laughs> no, he's not involved in on this. This is, this is exactly how these things roll. So transfer back to receptionist and hello. Hi, this is Susie. <laughs> Good morning. Could you transfer me to the person in human resources that is in charge of the internal training program, Super GS? customer service. What's your call in reference to? My call is in reference to helping enhance that program. So I probably want to talk to the manager of that program. Mm, they're out today. Thank you. This is exactly how these things go. <laughs> exactly how these things go. So at this point, I would probably hang up and call back tomorrow and, and see, if I can, see if I can get to the correct person. If I had LinkedIn Premium, I'd probably <laughs> try to rotate to sending that person an email. Uh, it says, I, I search on VLHR and try to send that to mail or HR person a, an email. So let's assume it's tomorrow and I call uh, and the, the switchboard again, and this time I get through. Hello, and, and let, let's pretend that, that I actually made it to HR this time. <laughs> Hi, this is Jan in HR. Hi, Jan, this is John Fry. I'm with the Park City Toastmasters Club, and I wanted to speak with whoever manages the Vail Super GS Employee Training Program. That would actually be me. Oh, terrific, thank you. The reason I'm calling is that Toastmasters is a international organization that specializes in helping people to improve their speaking and leadership skills. And we think there's a terrific opportunity to integrate into the Vail training program. And wanted to see if I could set an appointment with you to explore that idea further. You know, I'm familiar with Toastmasters. It's a name that I've, I've heard. All, all of our internal training programs and things like that um, are run out of Colorado. Um, I coordinate here, you know, things that come to me and, the, and get the curriculum from our Colorado office. So it really, um, you know, anything like that would need to be run kind of, you know, by our Colorado office. W wonderful. Could I take a moment and just reality test a couple ideas on you to make sure that I'm not wasting time for us or the Colorado director? Yeah, I have about five minutes. Uh, first, I assume that having good verbal interaction between your employees and your customers is an important idea. Oh, yes, we at Vail pride ourselves on our ability to communicate. <laughs> and, and is there a. <laughs> Is there a 
specific part of the Vail GS training program that trains people how to talk with customers, interact with them, ask them questions? Uh, yeah, there is, but you know, we really, one of the things that we pride ourselves is in our ability to screen and hire, and we hire only the most talented resources. We, we see talented people all the time at Toastmasters. It's amazing the level of folks, so I know that there are terrific people in this community. And another, another question, clubs that are near college campuses have a lot of people that have English as a second language as a member of their clubs, and they, they enhance their ability to speak English by attending Toastmasters. I, I assume that you still have a lot of J, what is it, J2 visa? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, couldn't make it through a season without them. And, and I assume that English as a second language is a struggle for some of them? Uh, for some of them, but we, we do try and, and find, again, the most talented resources for our Vail resorts. Only the best want to work for the best. And, and <laughs> did, does, it, does it seem in context for me to talk to the person in Colorado? Uh, yeah, you know, they're super busy, but, um, you know, I, the Toastmaster's name definitely is something that, uh, you know, we, we do value around here, so could yes. You, could you give me their, their name and contact information, please? If, how about if you shoot me an email and I will go ahead and pass your contact information along to them. I, I certainly will, and thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely one of the toughest jobs in business today, I think. Next, we have Jude Robinson. Jude is the CEO of Master One Matter, a business mastermind and coaching platform built around one simple concept a happy.